Hey guys, welcome back to the Outcheaping YouTube channel. My name is Austin, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace a fuel pump on a Jeep Cherokee XJ. Now today, we're going to be replacing it on my 99 Jeep Cherokee right behind me. It's a pretty involved process and a little bit time consuming, so make sure you stay tuned and I'll show you guys how to do it from start to finish. So let's get started. All right, so for getting started on this fuel pump replacement on this Jeep Cherokee XJ, I'm just gonna go over a key items that you're gonna need for the job. Um, obviously, number one is you're gonna need a new fuel pump. I opted to go with the Delphi uh, fuel pump right here because it's pretty much uh, the best one you can get in the market currently. Now, the normal go-to best one to use, uh, what everyone usually talks about, is using a Bosch fuel pump. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to source one. I think they discontinued them. So the next best one I chose was this Delphi one. Um, I've had great luck with them in the past. I've used their fuel pump on um, my truck and haven't had any issues with that. You definitely don't want to get a cheap $50 one because it's not fun doing this job over again. So I'd spend a little bit extra money and get a nice high quality one. Um, there's always the Mopar fuel pump that you can replace it on your Jeeps, but those are upwards of like $400. You can definitely do that um, if you have the budget for it, but uh, it's all up to you on what you want to do for replacing it. Now moving on to the other parts, uh, we are going to have to be removing the fuel tank to get this fuel pump out. So when doing that, um, I went and ordered some new fuel tank straps right here. They only run around 20 bucks. This brand right here was by Spectra, and I got these guys off Amazon. Um, they did not come painted, so I just painted them up real quick in some nice black so to prevent them from rusting out. Um, if yours are in good shape or if you live in a climate where you don't have much rust um, on vehicles, uh, no road salt or anything like that, you could get away with reusing them. But if you are planning on doing that, make sure you take a look at your vehicle and make sure they're not going to break. Uh, because these right here definitely like to break if you have that uh, nut on there likes to rust and they'll sometimes end up snapping. Next thing is I'm also going to be replacing the fuel filler hose um, and the vent hose. So I got these two right here. Um, I actually wasn't able to find them in stock by um, some uh, major manufacturers. Um, I've been looking for a couple months just trying to uh, order some parts to get this project going. but still wasn't able to find anything, so I actually got these off of eBay. Um, they're Chinese ones, but hopefully they'll hold up uh, for a while. Um, because compared to what's on the Jeep right now, it's over 20 years old and that rubber is starting to get really spongy. So definitely want to replace that. And these also came with some new hose clamps right here. I believe this whole setup was around 30 or 35 bucks. Then moving on lastly over here, this is a uh, fuel pump uh, retention ring removal tool. And this right here is going to make our lives a lot easier on getting that ring um, removed that holds a fuel pump into the tank. Um, if you guys know, there is a plastic ring uh, that's threaded down in there and this tool basically just clips onto it, holds it from either side, and then you can take a ratchet, put it in the middle, and then easily twist that off. Now I've done it in the past where taking that off with just a uh, screwdriver and a hammer it can be done, but you risk damaging that ring, and uh, finding a replacement ring is not easy to find. I don't think anyone makes any replacement ones, so you'll have to get a one from the junkyard or something like that. So you definitely uh, don't want to break that. It's worth it just to buy the uh, $20 tool and uh, take it off properly, and it makes uh, it go a lot faster as well. So I'm going to post a link in the description below on all these parts so you guys can source them yourself if you're looking to do the same job. Now let's head over to the Jeep and get started on getting that old fuel pump out. All right, so for getting started on this 99 Cherokee, there is a couple things we gotta do in place before we start tackling the fuel pump and removing that. Uh, first thing we gotta do is disconnect the battery. So I'm just gonna take off the ground wire lead, go into the battery right here, because we don't want any sparks or anything like that to happen, especially when we're dealing with fuel. So I'm just gonna remove that quick. All right, so now with that removed, the next thing we need to do is locate our Schrader valve on our fuel rail going into the engine. So that's right here. We have a little black cap on our Schrader valve, and we're basically going to relieve the pressure in the fuel system. And this is, uh, so when we remove it at the gas tank, um, in the back we don't have fuel spilling out um, under pressure. There should still be a little bit of pressure when the Jeep is off because there's a check valve that's in the fuel pump module and uh, it's gonna keep that pressure in here. So that way when you start off your vehicle, it gets it to light off right away. So I'm just gonna take a rag, put it down here, and then just take a little screwdriver and just push in that little pin right there and there should be a little bit of fuel that comes out. 
Actually, not a whole lot on mine since it has been parked for a couple days. And probably that check valve is uh, getting worn out, but good thing we're replacing the fuel pump today. So that's pretty much good on this end. Now we can move to the back of the Jeep where our fuel tank is located. Um, our fuel pump is going to be inside of there. And I'm going to show you what we all have to remove um, to be able to change that out. All right, so starting out underneath the driver's rear quarter panel over here, we got the side of our fuel tank, but you might notice we got a couple fuel connections, and that's actually coming from our fuel filler hose and our vent hose. So if you can see in between there, we got a couple hose clamps going to the hoses, uh, going directly to the tank. And uh, if you can see closely the orientation of those, um, they're actually facing up, so that means they probably installed... Uh, these hoses with the tank all at the same time and uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get those off with the orientation that they're in. Um, so another option for removing those um, from the tank is we can actually remove them up here on the fuel filler neck and there's actually a little uh, metal shield that's covering that all up and then from there it should expose uh, those two hoax clamps and then we can pull it off from there. And pulling the tank off with the hoses, um, if you do have a little bit of fuel in your tank, it does kind of help it prevent uh, it from sloshing out accidentally. Um, just a little bit of extra insurance on that end. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do here. Now, even though I am going to be replacing these hoses, um, I still do want to take them off properly. So we're going to do that onto that side. So now let's move over to the front of the tank where we have most of our other connections. All right, so now we're looking at the front of the tank meaning this side of the tank is facing towards the front of the vehicle. We can see all the lines that are going into our tank and these are basically what goes up to the engine. So we got our main fuel pump harness right here, um, just has a uh, safety clip on there we're gonna have to undo. Normally this would be uh, tied up to there, but I guess this might have fallen off over time. So we'll just have to zip tie that up when we install our new pump. And then we got our stainless steel line right here, which has our fuel quick disconnect right here. And all we have to do for that um, is just squeeze it in and pull it apart. There is no special tools for this connection right here. And then we also have our uh, EVAP line right here, this rusty line going to that, which I might replace since it's probably not doing much. And then once we get all these connections done, we can move straight to our fuel tank straps, which they have these eye hooks right here. And it's basically a long threaded rod and we have to undo those nuts um, on either of them and then uh, that should be loose enough and then we can take our fuel tank straps, fold them down. They're hooked in on the other side of the tank into uh, part of the unibody um, so those will just bend out of the way as we remove our tank. Now once I start loosening these up, um, these are probably pretty rusted on there. Um, you may have these uh, actually snap off or whatnot so it's always good just to get some replacement straps. They come with new eye hooks and everything like that as well. So while we're in here, I'm going to start taking some of the stuff apart, starting with the electrical connection. We're going to push that red safety clip to the side, squeeze in, and then push it apart. There we go. Now I'm going to get a little catch pan and a rag, um, because when we undo this fuel line, there is probably going to be fuel that comes out, but it shouldn't be under pressure. Um, since we relieved that pressure up front in the engine bay. Then up next I'm going to go to this vent line. See so if you can pull this out. That rubber is going to be all nice and hard. There we go. Shouldn't be any fuel in that one, just fuel vapor. Next we got the fuel line. They got a little gray tab in here. We're going to push those in. Have our pan ready. Push those two in and begin to separate. I'm going to have my rag right here. Just got some residual fuel. All right, so all of our connections on the front of the tank are off now, minus the straps. I'm going to move over to the fuel filler hose and get that off next. Now I'm going to start getting the shield out. It's held in by some 10 millimeter bolts, which are probably all going to snap. Somehow came out. There should be a total of four of these, two of them going into the unibody rail. Should be a total of four of these, two going to unibody rail and two of them going into the lower quarter panel. And 
this thing is just all rusted apart, unfortunately. And there we go, you can see our fuel filler hose, which is gonna be our bigger one, and then we got our vent hose, that's the smaller one. And then we got two hose clamps up here, and they look like a lot better access than the ones that are wedged in between the frame rail and the gas tank. So next thing, I'm gonna get those free up here, and it looks like it's gonna be a quarter inch or so um, hex on those uh, hose clamps, so we'll get those off. There we go, that's one line. There we go, that's that hose. A little bit of fuel in there actually. All right, so now we're ready to remove the fuel tank straps and they are 9 16 nuts on these hooks right here. Um, and most likely these are gonna snap since they're all rusty and everything like that. Um, you do wanna make sure you don't have a whole lot of fuel in the fuel tank, otherwise that's gonna come crashing down and it's not gonna be a good day for you. I shouldn't have too much. The gas light was on when I parked this, but it probably does have a quarter tank since it does not read accurate right now. So um, if you have another friend to help you with this, you can uh, do that. Otherwise, right now I got a jack with a piece of plywood underneath it and it's just putting a little bit of pressure on this fuel tank so that way it doesn't come crashing down when I'm trying to remove this. I went ahead and sprayed some penetrating oil on these threads already, had them soaking for a little bit, so I'm going to try and get these off. I will note on the driver's side, it's just a pretty standard nut over here, but however, on the passenger side, we do have a double nut, and that's because the heat shield for the exhaust is on this side of the tank, and that's held in um, by one nut on the bottom, and then the strap is up here on the top, so we got two nuts holding it in over here. So I don't have a ratcheting wrench for a 916, but see if I can break this free with just a wrench first. I think that's gonna actually snap it. There we go. Which actually, that's not too bad because that's less work for me if it just snaps off. Got new stuff to replace it anyway. Now I'm gonna go over here and get this off. That's going to end up snapping too, just because of the bend that's occurring in it. Now you can just cut these out, but obviously if you have sparks and stuff flying, um, you don't want that to ignite the whole thing since we got open fuel right here. So just be cautious of what you're doing. off as well. Part of the heat shield tab actually broke too so we'll have to figure out how to reattach that later. Pull this out. So now our fuel tank right now is just being held up by my jack and a piece of plywood. All right so when we lower these down we we'll have to be mindful on how we take this out since we still have the uh, filler neck hose and that vent line uh, going through that frame rail access hole so we're going to have to kind of lower this down on an angle and pull straight out. these straps we can just kind of bend out of the way actually remove these straps if you rotate them 90 degrees they pop out of their slots here in the back there we go all right so fuel tank is out and I got it up here on the workbench so it's a little bit easier to work on um, and this is definitely not reading right because there's definitely six or eight gallons in this tank and it was reading empty on the gauge so uh, the sending unit is confirmed to be pretty 
pretty much bad on that end. Uh, but basically what we're after is right here. This is where our main fuel pump module is going to be located. It has our fuel sender, a check valve, and a fuel pump all in one right here. And it's going to be located inside the tank. And uh, the way that this is put together, uh, we just got a big uh, plastic ring right here. Um, and to remove that, that's what we're going to use our special tool with right here. Otherwise, if you just use a screwdriver hammer method, which I've done before, that works. Um, but you do risk damaging this. Um, and we have to reuse this uh, since the new pump does not come with a new one. Uh, but as you can see, we got our filler lines over here. We got our vent and our uh, main filler one. Um, we'll replace those with new lines before we put this back into the Jeep. Our main vent line was right here. That was that connection going to that rusty line. Then we got our main pressurized fuel line right here and then our electrical connector. So to start off with our main fuel line, we got another quick disconnect out on the pump side. So same thing as before, we're just gonna squeeze in on these two tabs and then just separate the connection. There is gonna be a little bit of fuel coming out of this as well. All right, with that off, we can start tackling the fuel pump. So we got our plastic ring around here. Um, one thing to uh, take note is you might have some dirt uh, caked in, really packed in around uh, this ring area. You wanna try to remove that the best you can. Um, since everything is kind of wet and damp around here since I washed the vehicle um, and we had a big uh, warm up so everything's just kind of uh, pretty humid around here so all this dirt is pretty packed in there. Um, I'm not too concerned right now. I'm going to remove this ring first and then I should be able to get in here a little bit better so that way uh, no dirt falls inside of that tank. So right now I'm going to take our tool. It's basically a spanner tool so it's adjustable on the top here. Um, I already have this set for the diameter of this ring right here. So all I got to do push it on the circumference of this lock that down and it's going to lock up against uh, either rib on each side and then that's where it's really going to grip and hopefully turn this off so I'm going to hold the tank because this is going to want to spin oh man that is so much better Actually, I was using this incorrectly. That little rib should actually lock into uh, the corresponding cutouts on this tool, uh, but it's still worth either way. There we go, that fits a little bit better. So once it gets loose enough to a point, you can do the rest by hand. Now the only thing holding in the fuel pump should just be gravity and friction on that gasket that's in there. So I'm going to take the time right now, get this really clean so I have no chance of any dirt falling in the tank. Alright, so with that all cleaned out, we should be able to lift up on our fuel pump. Let's give it a couple wiggles. Now if you're wondering about the orientation, there is an arrow on this saying where it's going to lead out. Um, so that arrow is obviously going to go where this channel is, so you don't have to note the orientation that the old one is in. Just going to let this drain a little bit. Then we have to angle this since there is the float for the fuel sender. That's not too good. Um, if you notice, there's going to be a sock that's on the bottom that our fuel gets sucked into and it's not attached and it's actually stuck to the bottom of the tank. So that's not too good. I'm actually just going to set it to the side for now, but I'm going to throw this in my oil pan so it doesn't just get fuel everywhere. All right, so I got to get that sock out of there. The only way to do it is just to go in. That fuel is cold. 
As you can see from that sock how brown it is, that's all that dirt that gets in your tank. There's actually a small spot of sand and uh, stuff that was in there. So that's good that it was working, but it sucks that it delaminated or came off that old pump. All right, so I got our new fuel pump out of the box and everything is pretty much assembled, ready to go. Um, they got the wire all uh, tied up up here. I'm gonna leave that until we actually have to connect it. Um, but as far as a float, everything is assembled on here. Sometimes you'll get the float where uh, you have to snap this piece in, but everything should be good to go here. We have our pre-filter down here in the bottom that's nicely attached. And then we also have our gasket. Once again, this is a Delphi pump. Um, I've used their pumps before um, on my Dodge Ram. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, I would have liked to go with the Bosch ones, but I think they're discontinued now. Um, that was usually the go-to best one for these Jeep Cherokees, but, but this one's gonna be next in line. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is take our new gasket and set it into place. The thicker end is gonna go towards the top, and this is gonna set on the inner diameter of this ring groove right here. One other thing to mention, if you do see visual dirt on the bottom, you can always try and clean that out. Um, if you have a little bit of fuel in here, like I do, you can always siphon it out and use a little hose to kind of almost like vacuum it, like a pool vacuum and do it that way. Um, this one, however, looks pretty clean, so we can go ahead with the fuel pump. And then this one also has that arrow that's gonna be facing towards this little valley, and so does the uh, main fuel line exit. And so once you get to this point, you might actually feel it bottom out, but these are actually spring-loaded, so that way they sit on the bottom of the tank completely. So if you just push a little bit more, that's gonna collapse down. All right, so once you get it that last half inch, you're gonna to wanna to work yourself around Make sure it pushed in all the way because um, it's going to get pretty tight with that gasket. Next, we can take our ring and put that back on. I went and cleaned mine up a little bit. Now we'll just cinch this down. Nothing too crazy tight, but just a nice snugness. I think right there is good. All right, so now that the fuel pump's in, the next thing I'm gonna do is replace our fuel filler hose. And for these, they're gonna be the same quarter inch or you can get a flat head on these hose clamps. And these guys definitely need replacing since they're looking a little bit spongy and my hands were completely black after touching them before so they're starting to uh, deteriorate. That hose clamp is shot, just took the bolt right out of it. loose on here, but I think these hose clamps are still rusted tight. All right. All right, so this is giving me a little bit of a headache, so I'm just gonna cut this off. We got new ones anyway. Be a lot easier. And there we go. that one. All right guys, I want to take a quick moment to announce that we have restocked our outjeeping vinyl decals with our most popular ones being the white XJ and our silver and orange XJ vinyl decals. Those are fully in stock and I also want to announce that we also have a new design that we're dropping for this year and that's over here in the bottom where we have two different outjeeping round decals available in the J10 as well as the XJ versions in colors silver and white. Now, if you guys want to help support the channel, I got a link below to our outjeeping Etsy store where you guys can pick one of these up. I'd also appreciate any feedback in the comment section below if you guys feel like we should do some different color options as well. But right now, let's get back to the video. 
All right, so we're almost ready to put the tank back in the vehicle. There is still a couple things I wanna do before we do that. Um, right now it's to get our straps ready. So right here we have a rubber isolator. These are basically uh, hugging the old uh, rusty straps that are on the fuel tank. I took them off, cleaned them up as best as I could, and we're gonna reuse them over here onto the new straps. Now the reason why you want this is because of all the road bumps and vibration that your Jeep makes, you don't want that rubbing against the fuel tank and possibly wearing a hole into that. So we're just gonna take this and put it onto our new strap right here. You wanna make sure that the open end is gonna be facing down. All right, and that's the second one. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually put this uh, sheathing that was on the old uh, filler hose. I'm gonna put that on the new one right here. Basically this just makes sure there's no uh, chafing on this filler hose. Um, that passes through the section of frame rail on the driver's side um, from any vibration. So we're just gonna take this and slide it over just like so. And then we also have this little foot long uh, section of fuel line that actually goes from the fuel pump and then connects to the rest of the fuel line on the Jeep. And uh, since it is about a month later since I actually took this out, since I was doing some other welding and grinding work to the Jeep, um, I misplaced one of these clips that go into here. It's actually a long story on I forgot about the clip and actually had to dig the old pump out of the garbage, got it out, and I put it somewhere where I wouldn't forget, and obviously I forgot about it. So instead, um, I had to buy these uh, brand new. Luckily, uh, Dorman actually makes a replacement part. They come with an assortment of 3 8 and 5 16 is what you'll need for this line, since one end is 5 16 and one end is 3 8 uh, The bigger end, 3 8 goes into the fuel pump side. I put the part number for the assorted one. Um, it's going to be 800-016 Dorman part. Um, I was able to get this from O'Reilly's next day. Um, and then they also do make another kit right here that just has a 5 16 I picked up an extra one in case I need them for a future project. Um, that one's going to be 800-005. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can find that as well since they are kind of hard to find. Um, especially if you lose them, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But as far as these clips, these actually go on the line side. Um, and they clip into this so we actually don't have to put this onto this one. Um, so we're going to head over to the tank and attach this quick and then we should be able to install our tank. All right, so looking at the top of the fuel tank, we have our line coming out right here. This is where our clip's going to go on. This is just the cap that was on here from the factory for the new fuel pump. Take that off and we're going to push this guy on. And it's going to go back behind that ridge. Then we're going to take our 3 8 side of our little extension fuel line right here and we're going to push this into place until it clips and there we go that's going to lock it in um, since this is a pressurized fuel system obviously uh, you can get up to 60 psi um, if you didn't have that lock in right there that would easily shoot out your line and then you have fuel spilling everywhere so i'm actually going to leave the new fuel uh, filler hoses off while I install this because it's going to be a lot easier. I just have a rag stuffed in there for right now so that way any fuel that's in here won't slosh around and spill out. We're going to get this all bolted up into the Jeep first and then we can fish in those lines. Um, there should still be plenty of space to put those on with our clamps as well. All right so we're back underneath the Jeep. We're going to latch in our new fuel tank straps into this back support over here. So we're going to rotate 90 degrees of how it would be installed, fit it through the hole, and then lay it down just like that. It should fall down nice and vertical. Then we'll do the other side as well. All right, so I got the fuel tank placed on a floor jack um, with a piece of plywood underneath it so it gets as much uh, surface area on that as possible. And it's right in between the two straps so it shouldn't be in the way. Um, I still have about five six gallons of fuel in this tank unfortunately so it's going to make it a little bit harder to uh, do this by myself so i'm going to try and uh, wrestle this in there i got my j hooks in place in the pockets that they go in so that's already got the hardware set aside so i'm going to jack this up and kind of hold it in place and hopefully i can get those uh, uh, straps up in there and uh, get those started so that way this can go up nicely
right, so I got one holding that in there. Now I'm gonna move to the other side, push that up and get that nut on as well. And actually, I think it's easier if you just put this nut on first, and then just lift up on the tank and hook this J-hook in place. So I'm gonna do that first. All right, so before we tighten this down, you wanna make sure you have all your lines nice and exposed. So we got our connection right here, we got our vent hose, and then we got our high pressure fuel line that goes into over here. Um, you might notice that my vent line that uh, goes to charcoal canister isn't there. Uh, that's because I remade it off camera um, out of some copper nickel line, so we'll have to install that when we hook everything up. But now we're ready to uh, tighten this up. Um, best to use a ratchet wrench since this is a very long bolt. I did put some anti-seize on the threads, um, so that way if I have to take this off again, hopefully I can reuse the straps, um, but it's gonna make it a lot easier. Uh, so now I'm just gonna start tightening this up and uh, make sure our straps in the middle of the groove that's uh, embedded into the tank, um, so that way everything goes on nice and square. And I'm just gonna do this a little bit at a time and uh, go one side to the other, make sure everything goes up straight. All right, so I got those tightened up. Um, don't want to go crazy tight because you don't want to deform these brackets too much, um, but it's pretty nice and solid in there. It's not going to wiggle around. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea after a couple drives to go back under here and just make sure uh, it's tight again because it might shift and kind of settle in a different place. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, but now we're going to focus on getting these lines installed. So I went ahead and put a new clip on this fuel line right here since the other one, um, old plastic they can sometimes crack and be brittle so I'm going to take our fuel line right here push it into our piece that comes off the tank these dormant clips are junk so I'm going to put on the original the only conclusion is maybe it's just dry in there so Put a little of this. Oh yeah, much better. Just a dry O-ring. Now we got our vent line right here. Going into the new line I made right here. Hopefully we can get that over and in there. And the flare I made on the end. Oh, yeah. Sit there like that. And now we got our electrical connector. Then we got a red safety clip. Now, there is supposed to be some line holders and this clip holder that's right here, but that all since broken off, so I'm just gonna zip tie this stuff into place. We got a couple little holes where we can just kind of zip tie them so that way they're not rattling around. All right, so that's pretty much it for the lines going up here into the tank. Now I'm gonna move to the side and we'll get the fuel filler hose all put back together. All right, so I'm gonna pull out my paper towel, holding these lines, or plugging these holes up. And then with our new fuel filler hose and vent hose, there's gonna be one end on them that it's gonna be a little bit flared out. That's gonna go towards the tank. So I already put my hose clamps on, um, just keeping in mind how they're orientated so that way we can tighten this up uh, properly. And I'm gonna slide it through the frame rail I put a little bit of WD-40 um, on the inside so it slides in nice. Actually I misspoke, the uh, main filler hose, the flared end is actually going to go towards the fuel filler neck. We're going to want to work this in so it bottoms out on the tank. I can stick our other end on our filler net. I'm going to get the other hose in place real quick and then we can kind of situate our hose clamps. Now this one we want 
the bulged out point um, towards the tank. And then we can put our vent tube, feed it up into the filler neck. All right, so I got my clamps situated where I want them. Now I'm just gonna snug them up. Um, these are an eight millimeter. Kind of had to rotate them in the spot where I can access them both with the ratchet in here um, inside this filler neck since it is kind of tight. And these hose clamps are kind of cheap. They're kind of bending and being weird, so I may have to replace these with higher quality ones. These are just cheap Chinese ones. Alright, so that's pretty much it for replacing a fuel pump. Um, there is a couple other components I didn't uh, put back yet. Um, one being this little shield that covers this uh, filler neck hose. Um, that I'm getting sandblasted and I'll put down here on a later date. Then we also have the heat shield that's on the other side of the tank. That also gets bolted into place. Um, but when I remove that, um, all the holes were all kind of like tore out and stuff. So I'm going to have to rebuild that and then put that on at a later date as well. So now the next thing we got to do is we can go and start this thing up. We're going to have to prime the fuel pump um, since there is no uh, fuel in the line and up to the engine. So I'll show you guys how to do that quick. All right, so the last step in the process is basically just to start up the Jeep. And to do this, we're just going to prime the pump a few times by cycling the key into the run position, but not starting all the way. I'm going to do that for a few times until I hear that pump bog down and then attempt to start it. Just like that, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Overall, it wasn't too complicated of a process. What a lot of people get scared of is having to drop the tank, but honestly, it's not too big of a deal as long as you have some new straps lined up and maybe some new filler hoses if they're getting a little bit old and spongy, like how mine were. So hopefully you guys were able to follow this process if you're doing it at home. A couple tips would definitely be just have someone there to help you uh, drop that tank and put it back into place, especially if you have a little bit more fuel in there, because sometimes these fuel pumps go out uh, when you have a full tank unfortunately but lucky for me i was able to do it when i wanted because it didn't really fail it was just the sending unit was starting to go and reading incorrectly but now it's nice and accurate uh, before it was reading empty when i had a quarter of a tank so now it's almost like i have a bigger fuel tank as always i'm going to post a link in the description below on all the parts i used in this video make sure you guys check out out jeeping on etsy i'll post a link in the description below um, so you guys can help support the channel. I restocked on some of your favorite decals as well as getting some new designs here for the channel. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Outcheaping YouTube channel. Help keep these videos coming. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.